Delighted to have Dave Peterson and Dave, thank you for coming. My pleasure. Dave's been coming to our book club. Yes. He went to our coffee house. Right. And we've been talking about the battles of paperwork here as the <laughs> show started. But we're first Navy guy. We've had two Marines and an Army, so you you representing the Navy for the first. Okay. So let me start asking. So how did the how did the Navy start for you? Post college, pre college, what happened? I went I went in the uh, I graduated in sixty seven. Sixty seven. You know that was the. Uh, Two years after the first big buildup, so I figured right. I, in Vietnam. And, and they're going to draft you, or you might as well get in. Right. Yes. So I, I decided let's go, let's go the way. It, okay. and so I went to, down and recruit to the recruiter, and uh, signed up and went uh, to, to go to Navy OCS in August. Okay. Now where'd you been, where'd you been to college? I went to St. Michael's College in Vermont. Oh, St. Michael's. Okay. All right. And now I got to ask you, we've done. How was OCS for a Navy? Uh, Tough or the, interesting or? Well. First of all, I was I was a sea explorer in high school. Okay. So when we has, started yeah. started doing like basic seamanship and navigation and stuff like that, that was easy for you me. Knew it. Knew uh, but you know, the biggest fear that all of us had was if you failed out of OCS, you were going out in a fleet as Back a seaman. Fleet. And that meant Would you that, go in as an E five or an E one if you flunked out? You would have probably gone in as an E one. <laughs> <laughs> I was an E one, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, and, you know, OCS uh, was four months in New Newport, Rhode Island, started in August and was commissioned in December. Good. And it was a good experience? Yeah, I thought it was. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, from OCS, where did you go after OCS? Okay. At, uh, near the end, when they uh, said, what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I couldn't envision myself going on a destroyer in the North Atlantic in the okay. wintertime. It'd be, no, you know. No. Freeze. You freeze. So, um, I had heard about diving and salvage. I said, "Hey, that's a good deal. Let me let me apply for that." Oh, so as an officer, you could one of you, the branch you could pick would be diving and salvage. Yes. Oh, okay. So um, they took us. Uh, we all went down to uh, Goat Island, which is right there in Newport, and uh, they put us in a hard hat. Uh, now, describe to everybody. A, the hard hat is the, the old copper helmet that uh, the you, see, you see. They pop on and screw on. Right? You, uh, you just twist it a little oh, bit. Just twist it. Yeah. Okay. And. Uh, so they took and uh, put us in that, had us walk over, get on the stage, put you underwater for uh, a few seconds just to see if you were claustrophobic. So you could handle it. Yeah. It's like volunteering for jump school. You got to jump off a stand. And if yeah, you, if you right. Didn't look like a complete fool. Yeah, you're eligible. Yeah. So, then, oh, then, so they put, you, then they put. So you were Lieutenant JG. They put a heart. I was just, then I was just a, an OCS trainee. 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 Okay. So th then they put us in a chamber oh, to good. see if you uh, could handle. Uh, taking the oxygen under okay. pressure in case you had the, the diving sickness. And some old grizzled chief was in there, and he says, uh, there was like, I don't know, let's say 20 of us in this big right. chamber. And they said, if anybody starts twitching or anything, don't do anything, <laughs> I'll take care of it. Uh, you know, and it, you, you had to be in there for half an hour. You had no I idea. You actually sat in the chamber for half an hour. Well, it was, you know, it's big. You know, you're sitting it's there, room, 10 guys, it? looking at 10 guys across okay. the way. Okay. Uh, and nobody had any problems. So when you finished that, they said, okay. Um, you're qualified. Yeah, well, you're eligible you're to go to dive school. school. I do have to ask you a question. Do you get, before we get it, do you get claustrophobic when they put that helmet over you? And, no. You don't? Okay. I don't. I don't, but other people do. I mean, it's like if you have an MRI and you get in that big thing. and it's, Some people can't handle it. I don't want to can't handle the tubes. It's no, no big deal. Oh, so you, you didn't have any problem no. with it? No. But then when I, when I, right out of OCS, I had orders to go to diving schools here in Washington, D.C., so I started dive school in February of 1968 Okay. in the Anacostia River. In the Anacostia River. Polluted then, as heck, am I not recording? You're, you're in the government. They don't care. <laughs> <laughs> you're a Lieutenant J.G. Jump in. Right? So, so they took in... Um, uh, you, your visibility was this much once you got mm. underwater. You couldn't see anything. My father grew up in Anacostia, and he saw it go from a place he could swim as a kid in the 20s and 30s to a, a foulest river yeah. in D.C. Yeah, uh, so that's, that's what we, you mm. know, I went through dive school there, finished in May, went to a, a salvage ship, met it in Vietnam, and was on that for a year. Tell me, about, let's go back to uh, Anacostia River and school. What, what, I mean, every day in the war, how did that work? You got we, four uh, seasons in well, we had we, well, we, we were there from February until May. We started with uh, uh, the hard hat, which is okay. weighs 195 pounds. Uh, you they'd dress you up there and you would You're uh, in a rubber suit, right? Or it's canvas, canvas suit? Canvas, canvas. suit. 
you would uh, walk across the deck, down climb down 13 steps and get in the water to do your thing. Now, is this in February and March? Well, yeah. I know the water's freezing in April. When you, when you came, you had um, gloves. They weren't quite mittens, so you had two fingers, two fingers, and a they thumb. Fit in. Okay. So you could actually manipulate it, but you didn't have the five fingers in the gloves. You actually jumped? And you no, actually you, you had to climb down. Oh, you you had climb, climb down, down the ladder. Okay. And then coming back, you had to climb back up, and... It was so cold that oh, your hands would, you, you couldn't grip the gloves, it. The gloves were freezing to the, the metal rungs as you were climbing up. Now, let me go back. Is there a team that puts the helmet on? I mean, you can't do it. You, you yeah, don't no, do you, it. Have, you have tenders, two oh, tenders. Okay. So their job is to get everything on correctly. Yeah. And there's an oxygen line going it, into it. The, yeah, the hose comes up and comes around. Okay. It's, it's, I can't imagine ever going in the Anacostia River, much less February, March, and, we, and April. And we scuba do dove in the river, too. Oh, you did scuba in the river, too. Yeah. Uh, is it immediately hot showers afterwards? No. And, no. no, I mean, it's just, you're the young. Navy. You're young. <laughs> the invincible young yeah, Lieutenant yeah, J.G. You're, you're 20, no, I was an ensign then. Oh, I'm the, sorry, you go ensign then Lieutenant uh, You're an Army guy, so you uh, don't we, I don't know. You're, I yeah, can't figure it's it It's like out. a second lieutenant, first lieutenant. Okay, uh, so, okay. Yeah, so. So you, well, any, I got to ask you this, any episodes of people's not getting oxygen properly or any good, st I mean, was not, it fairly uneventful? Not in the, not in the school. Okay, so yeah. school was good. That, yeah. that was easy. school was fine. And it was in D.C. Yeah. So I never, I was born and raised in so, D.C. So we finished our, the last month, they had a salvage project, which was down on the other side of the Woodrow Wilson Bridge, sure. where the big uh, MGM thing is now. Right, yes. They had a World War II uh, landing craft, uh, small infantry landing craft there that we had to go down. We also had second class divers with us that would, everybody had to go down and find the holes, come back up and tell them where they were, patch it, and then. And this up is and with a hard it. helmet on. Mm -hmm. What are secondary divers? You mentioned, you said there was always secondary divers with you. Well, there, there would be, a, if you were going inside a wreck, you, would have, you would have a, a diver outside tending okay. your lines as you went oh, okay. inside a wreck. Okay, so they're making sure the lines don't get caught yeah. up or whatever. Yeah. Okay. So you went through, now how long was the diver school? Four months. Four months. And then. I'm afraid to ask, where to next? Where they I went to the, the USS Grapple, which was a salvage repair ship. Now, uh, where was that? It was home ported in Hawaii, but I, I met it in Da Nang. Oh, wait a minute, Anacostia River to Hawaii. Yeah, but I... Dave, that's not a bad I met, deal. I met the ship in Da Nang. Oh, you actually met it in Vietnam? Yeah. Oh, okay. So that was, that was my first exposure to Vietnam, was to fly there and wait a week while the ship was somewhere else. Oh, getting else. ready to go. Oh, oh you had to wait. So, oh. so what did they have you doing for a week in Da Nang? Just waiting. Oh, just waiting. Okay. You weren't I mean, diving or anything? No, no. Okay. I was just just in transit. And, okay. you know, I could have gotten lost. They wouldn't, nobody would have known where I was. <laughs> but, you, know, you know, they just dumped you in the middle of the tarmac. Yeah, so a week. You're, you're waiting. Your you're waiting. Yeah. So uh, you're waiting for this. The ship came in, and then you went back to Hawaii? Or, or we, you stayed we in stayed, Vietnam? We stayed in, uh, in between Vietnam and uh, the Philippines for two or three months. And then uh, th it was mid-tour for the, the ship. They, they had uh, deployed... Uh, uh, Three or four months before I got aboard. Now, let me go. I mean, and again, I'm still I'm learning. Remember, you're right. You were absolutely right. I'm an mm -hmm. army guy. Now, would it be officers and enlisted men diving together, or mm -hmm. the dive? Oh, yes. okay. You had like a platoon or a group no, of divers. No, just on the ship. They were all. Um, uh, they all had different jobs. So you okay. had a boatswain mate. You had you had an engineman. You had a ship okay. fitter. Who just happened to be divers. Yes. Double That was a second a second job for. Oh, them. Okay. All right. Uh, and and for the officers, it's. Pretty much was the same thing. Uh, you had other duties that you had to do, but uh, now, how many? See, I having been in the service and again in the army, I didn't realize. W I knew we had divers there, but I didn't know we had hard hat. I mean, how many officers were doing this? I mean, how many fellow officers were hard hat divers with you on the ship? Well, or, no, I mean, or, the navy was like. I mean, a, a, well, they were putting through. There was 30, in my class, it was uh, probably 25 officers. Okay. We had one Vietnamese officer, we had uh, two Army officers, and we had, uh, I think, three or four Coast Guard oh, so officers. That's a substantial number of people then, going through the program. Yeah. Okay. And they were doing that probably five times a year. Oh, all right. So we had, I mean, I didn't even know that existed. But at that time, they had uh, 13 salvage ships out there. Okay. Now, you were, and I got, again, uh, UDT was around in those days before the SEALs. Yeah, that time. this. But, but you're that's, totally that's, separate. That's, totally separate. That's not the same okay. thing. You're salvaging. And we hard. were I was not EOD either. Okay. What's EOD? Explosive Ordnance Disposal. Okay. And they're they're the ones that you know, they had they're divers too, but they also specialized in disarming bombs. Oh, getting to the beaches and clearing the beaches. Whatever wherever. Wherever the weapons are. Yeah. Okay. So you're in Vietnam. 
You were part of a group. Am I, I right? was on the ship. You're on then, the ship. But I got transferred from the sh I got transferred from the ship to Harbor Clearance Unit One. Okay. Uh, and that was I reported there in August of. Uh, 1969. 69. Okay, that's I got out of the, I got out of the army in uh, September 69. In now, harbor harbor clearance. Their their mission what was yeah. Our, their mission was if something sank. Uh, oh, get get it out of there. Get it out of there. So the ships could get. So and in, in, and that's a World War it carryover from World War Two where they went into all the major harbors where ships had sunk in the harbors and got them out of there. They'd get them, they'd refloat them, move them out, blow them up, do whatever. So this has been going on since World War II in the Navy. Well, this, this unit, oh. uh, Harbor Clearance Unit 1, was re uh, created, if you would, in like 1967, 68. Okay. Well, Vietnam, because of Vietnam. Vietnam, Vietnam. Yeah. okay. Now, we, what missions did you have with them? Okay, we. The, the, I was an uh, officer in charge of a uh, harbor clearance team. Oh, you was a okay a team of how many people on a team? I had about thirty five guys. Oh, okay, that's a big one. Unit. One uh, assist. Uh, by that time, I was a lieutenant JG. I had okay. an assistant, and two chiefs, and the rest of. It's uh, like a platoon. I mean, that's a yeah. that's a good size. And we unit. had probably eighteen divers. Okay. And then the rest were support people. And these are eighteen hard hat divers. Or a mixture yes. of hard, oh, so they, were all, they were all either first or second class divers, yes. Okay. So they were, they were uh, more than scuba divers. Did you clear any specific harbors? Or? <clears throat> well, we, our mission, when we went into Vietnam, our mission was, and we went into Vietnam, by the way, uh, supposedly three months at a time as TAD from Okay, just from get Subic in and Bay. get out, okay. Supposedly. Uh, so, yeah, the first time it was five months. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Pentagon. <laughs> so, so we... Um, our mission was to do just com combat marine salvage operations. Okay. So we would get a, a call from uh, the Commander Naval Forces Vietnam salvage officer in Saigon to say uh, a, a boat, a PBR, or a swift boat is Something sunk sent. here. Okay. Uh, go and get it and raise it. And you just, the whole ship would go? Or uh, just we, a platoon? We would just, oh, where would you go? Right? I would just take a oh, your handful unit. of guys. Okay. Not the whole group. I'd just take uh, three, four, five guys, whatever you felt was necessary. And you would get to wherever you had to go. We we operated out of uh, Vung Tau, which is in down in the Delta area, okay. the mouth okay. of the Mekong. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> you know, the first job I had was to go to uh, some island that was way out in the uh, um, Sea of China or something. Yeah. Oh, really? And something had gone down. So you, yeah, they they had lost a uh, pusher boat from a uh, yeah. a tender. How do you? I mean, it just sounds silly. As a guy, as an army guy, how do you salvage? What do you well, do? Well, in that case, we had to we had to find it. We put a uh, and it was like in a hundred feet of water, okay. um, and we we uh, put a um, some lift straps on it. Uh, and they just straps literally go around the no. They had boat. they had pointed some of all the boats over there, even PBRs, swift boats. They all had lifting points okay. where you could attach you could things attach to something. them, okay. and then just get it up, get them up. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, how, did it take a? Did it take all thirty guys to do that? No, it, you would take, uh, you know, just a handful of people that, uh, and you would you would sometimes I had uh, two or three teams sub sub doing parts of my things, team doing different, different places in uh, in country because we would just go wherever. I mean, uh, in that first five months, I went from the southern end all the way up to the DMZ. So there's constant things needing to be cleared out of well, the bodies things of water. Sink, boat, uh, Planes crash, helicopters Glad crash, uh, trucks go off bridges or whatever, and they want them back. Did you ever have to salvage boats, planes, trains with people in it? Uh, I didn't personally, but uh, people the in unit the, did. the unit did. Okay. Yeah. Which yeah. Would be, uh, that would be a tough job, right? It, it, yeah, it would be. Um, mm. And then, you know, we wherever these things went down, normally that was the result of enemy action or whatever. So, so you, would, you could get pot shots at you or some interference, right? And sometimes we'd uh, ask for support from the Army or from uh, other riverine forces there to, to you know, run interference. Hey, was there force. ever such a thing as you're diving and people shooting at you or shooting no, at the... No, oh, we, yes? No, we, oh. we would... If, you were, if it was that high, we would... safe. We would, yeah, we okay. would, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, now, would you work with UDT or, or no? You're, again, salvage. We, we worked here. sometimes. We worked with EOD people. Okay. Uh, because there'd be unexploded ordinances there. So they had to get that out of there before you can get the ship yeah, out of yeah. the plane or whatever. I mean, we uh, the first the first big job I worked on was 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 three months in Dong Tam, which is down in the Delta, but it's an army base. Okay. And um, it was on a dredge that had sucked up a piece of unexploded ordinance and mm. it blew so you up. You get live stuff in it. And it blew up in a pump room and it sank mm. it. Mm. But you'd be down there working, and there'd be 
stuff rolling around on a deck. You don't know what it is because you it can't see it. It could be live ammunition. It could be, yeah. Right. Any, did you lose people? I didn't personally know. Oh, okay. But so, the command did. Oh, they did? Yeah. And that would be diving accidents or the result just of, freak uh, accidents? Or the result of enemy action. Oh, it's the yeah. of enemy action. Yeah. Okay. Now, when you arrived at a place, you just temporary in a barracks or something and then you, or yeah. you put yes. up a few tents. I tell you what, this is not sea hunting Lloyd Bridges. <laughs> no. And, and then, like, we went up to, like I said, I went up almost to the DMZ and uh, we flew into Da Nang. They put us in the temporary barracks here. And outside of uh, Da Nang, and it wasn't until later I realized the temporary barracks were right next to the wire. So if anything, if you were if hit, they're coming in. They're going to hit you first. <laughs> I, I put my hard helmet and jump in the water and get out of there. No, we drove. We dove scuba mostly in, uh, okay. in Vietnam. Okay. Now right. look, at, I hate to do this. Our time zone was up. I told you it's going to go by quick, right? We'll get you back at another time and continue with this. But I, I can't. Now when I watch those movies, when they so they actually screw it on, they don't bolt it on. Right, it's a quarter turn. It's a quarter turn. Mm -mm. No, I get claustrophobia in this studio. I, can, I can't imagine if that. We, if we had a dress here, I could, I could dress, dress you in a full outfit, the shoes and whatever. One time you. we might do that on another show. <laughs> hey, thank you for You're serving. You're welcome. Thank no you for problem. some good stories. My name is Fred McNeil. You've been watching QAC TV 7. My time's up. Thank you for your time. We're going to see you next time. And I salute all you veterans. Mm -hmm.